Good evening. Kabot Haraf, how are you? Oh, Hashem. Oh, Hashem. Okay. Okay. We're starting a new chapter. Actually, no, we didn't finish, right? We had something left over there. We were in the Beit Yosef in the tour. Yes. Okay. Got it. Right. So um, the Beit Yosef brings over here and see if Gimel it says here, Katar Rabbeinu Yonah. It says Rabbeinu Yonah, the Shem Rabbeinu Sarfat, right? In the name of the French rabbis. So here's the thing, right? That if you wrap your arms around your body, then it is considered to be an interruption, inter interposition. right? And then they will be allowed. So he says, Bet Yosef. Even what I wrote already above, the name of these rabbis, that if he, if he covers his heart with his hands, right? We said, yesterday we mentioned that. If he covers his hands with his, with, a, with his heart, with his hands, it doesn't help you. But nevertheless, um, they shouldn't see the erba. It's not really considered be covering. If Shardem modu beha, but says with yourself, I hear it, maybe that they, they agree that when you put your arms around your body, uh, you give yourself like a big hug there. Right? Beha, the shani kisui biad That's different, right? Biad. Uh, so, so, in other words, there's a difference between the hand and, and the arms. Why? why? Why would that be different? So, he said, because. The heart and the hand is like one body. So you can't cover the body with the body, right? It's the same, it's the same thing. When it comes to have sick, the mafsik that it inter interferes, interrupts, in interposes, whatever you want to call it. Afagav the chad gufainun. That's interesting, right? So in other words, he's trying to tell you, Bet Yosef, something interesting here, that there's a difference between covering your heart and putting a have sec, uh, a, like a, which is like a partition, basically, between your heart and your erva, your genitals. So he's telling you, right, that when it comes to with the arms, putting it around your body, it's going to work. It may work. When it comes to the hands, it doesn't work because you can't cover yourself with yourself. But you can make have sex. Interesting idea. So, uh, it, uh, so just to, to, to fill you in, right? What were we talking about yesterday? We were talking here that if a person wants to say kiyat shema, and he's in the, uh, the he's in the the water, right? Uh, in the mikveh, whatever, in the bath. So we 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 have we require that. His heart should not see the erva, should not see the genitals. But if you make a have sec interruption, so then it works. That's what he's trying to say over here. But to cover it with your hands is not going to work. You can't cover yourself with yourself. 
That's what he's trying to say. Okay, let's see Shulchan Aruch here. It's quite a fine line of logic there, you know. Not exactly so clear, but Right, so it says like this in Shulchan Aruch. If a person uh, hugs himself, basically, right, uh, with his arms, so there we consider like he's doing a hepsek, which is basically like a partition, you know? He's partitioning the higher part of his body from the lower part of his body. So it's like he's wearing a belt, you know? That's what we're saying, basically. You put a belt on there. So that belt helps you uh, to say ki uh, when uh, right when you're not clothed, you, you don't have your clothes on. How does that work? Uh, because uh, you're in the water, right? As we said yesterday. So when you're in the water, you need to separate between the top of your body and the bottom of your body. And this makes you like a belt over there. That's what we're saying. Interesting concept. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, Amen. So let's look at the um, Dalid. It says over there, It says in Orchot Chaim, It says in Orchot Chaim, Right. And the truth is, I already mentioned this before, like a couple of weeks ago, whatever, when we were talking about something there, uh, that what? That the body of the woman is not like the body of the man. It's different, right? So therefore, he says, because of that, if a woman is wearing a robe, so what does that mean? That there's no, there's no uh, partition between the top of the body and the bottom of the body. That's okay. You can she can still say Kriyat Shema. So why is that? Uh, wh- uh, now he explains, right? Uh, so the thing is that the way that the woman of the uh, the body of the woman is built is that the erva is on the bottom, right? Not like on the, on the man, which is like more sticking out, right towards the outside. So therefore, since it's on the bottom, position is on the bottom, so therefore the truth is that even if she's not really covered so well, still the heart doesn't see the erva, uh, the, the nakedness, right, the, the genitals. So therefore, says the here, the Orchot that when, when, it, when it comes to the woman, it's okay. She can get away with this. There's also Gemara, by the way, which is uh, similar to this. Also down, brought down the Shulchan Ruch as well. Uh, that what? That if a, woman's, if, she, if a woman is totally naked, okay? And she sits on the floor. She's totally naked, not wearing anything, okay? If she sits on the floor, she can say a blessing. She can say a bracha. Why is that? Because since she's sitting on the floor, her erva is covered. When it comes to the man, it's not so, right? It's not covered because it sticks out on the front. So therefore, right, with a man, it's not going to help you. To sit. You, have to have, you have to be wearing something to cover your erva. But when it comes to a woman, she can get away with that. It's the same, same concept over here. Okay, very good. So uh, let's go on a little bit. So it says... Um, we don't really need that it should be like in the ground, you know, stuck in the ground. Right? Uh, that's only when they're like totally naked. Then she has to be like sitting in the, as we said, right? Sitting on the floor. When it comes to wearing a robe, since her body is covered, but there's no interruption between the top and the bottom, Nevertheless, it's okay but when it comes to a woman. But it says, 
also the Bet Yosef, that not only that, that applies to your erva, it also applies to somebody else's erva. So what does that mean? Like if you're in, let's say in the mikveh, right? Whatever, in the bathhouse, and you see somebody else's erva, your heart sees it. That's also going to prevent you from saying Kiyat Shema. It's also going to be a problem. So not only your own, but also somebody else's as well. Okay, very good. That's the idea there. So let's see the uh, Shulchan Aruch, Daled. So says Shulchan Aruch, Yesh mi she'omer she'anashim yecholot lebarech u'litpalel kishem lebrushot ha'chaluk. Right, so here you go, right? That there is one that says, uh, as we mentioned, that a woman can pray uh, or bless a blessing if she's wearing a robe, even though uh, there's no interruption between the top and the bottom. Right? So what does that mean? She's like under the robe, she's totally naked. There's no underwear, nothing, right? Even then, it's okay. Uh, so says the Ramah, the Imhen Arumot, ah, so says the Ramah, what about if she's totally naked, right? That we just discussed that. So then, she has to be sitting on the floor, you know? This way her erva is covered by the floor. Uh, or she oshvot ala shadvar or sitting on something else. The az en liban roet erva shanahem. Then the heart doesn't see the erva. Ma she en ken kach beish. When it comes to a man, as we said, right, he's positioned differently, so therefore it's not the same thing, right? So that's the story. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll I'll move on. Okay, so now we got to go to the tour. Meshar Evarav Meshalim at Ota. The truth is, we already read this, but anyway, let me just look at it for a second. It looks like I already, I, already, I already deleted it, but it's okay. We'll just read it a bit yourself. So it says like this. Um, we already read it anyway. So. so it says, So it says, what about some other limbs of the body? If they see the erva, is that a problem? Or is it only the heart, right? So the tour said, that's not a problem, right? Only the heart is the problem. Um, so it says, but Yosef, where is the source for this? The Sof Perak Mishemeto, right over there in the Masechet uh, Brachot, Kaf Hey Amud Bet. If Ligu Emora E Beikvo Nogia Nogia Oro E Terva. So the Amoraim over there are arguing about what? About the heel if it touches or sees the Erva. Is that a problem or not? Why are they asking Dafka about the heel? What what's what's unique about the heel? Because the heel is adjacent to the erva, you know, in terms of the spacing. So it's more likely to be that way than any other part of the body. Uh, I'm talking about like when a person is uh, standing, you know. So anyway, or uh, maybe even sitting possibly, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, right, um, so, um, the Gemara asks this question. So the halacha is that if it's touching, it's asur. That that distracts you. But if it just sees it, it's okay. So we see from there, right, that the other parts of the body, we don't really care so much. Uh, so he says the reason is because we make a gzera, right? Uh, that what? Uh, that if he if his if his um, heel is touching the erva, we're afraid that also the, the hand is going to touch as well. That's what the Tosfot says. Katua Rabbeinu Yonah says Rabbeinu Yonah Rosh, 
והוא הדין לכל האיברים. So he says this also applies to any of the limbs of the body as well. הנוגעים בערבה, the touching ירבה, ועד הנקת עקבו, so why did Dabka talk about the heel, right? We already explained it, but מפני שהעקב עומד כנגד הערבה, because the heel is like corresponding to the ערבה in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the spacing. וכך כתב ברוחות חיים, that's what says ברוחות חיים, בשם הרעבד, נעים את הרעבד, והוא הדין לשאר האיברים. So it, says, it also applies to other limbs as well. אפילו ירחותיו, even uh, the thighs שהערבה שוכבת עליהם, sometimes the ערבה is like sitting on them, whatever. Um, uh, צריך להפסיק כאן בבגד. So you do have to, uh, you have to separate them with some kind of a cloth. או להרחיבן שלא ייגעו בערבה, right? Or to widen it in order that it shouldn't touch the ערבה. So today, you know, we can solve the problem by wearing, uh, by wearing pants, you know, or, uh, or shorts. That would solve the problem. Or underwear, right? Same thing, the same, the same idea. This way it's not touching directly. There's something in between there. Okay, so then it goes on. Shadoi Gabirba, Kishenu Lovesh Minichasaim, right? As we said, right? That's only if he's not wearing pants. Because if he is, right, that solves the problem, obviously. Akana Shano, Umash Mali, so it says, says with Yosef, that it implies to me, the lo mikre erva liyan ze, ela, it's only called erva, ela higid atzmo, higid atzmo. So it says, only, only the penis itself is, is, is called the erva, as opposed to what? As opposed to testicles, right? Excuse, excuse my language. Right? That's, that's what he's saying. That uh, there's a difference between one and the other. Dina gabi adab, if he touches it with his hand, right? what's going to be is going to cause him some bad thoughts like that. You know, if he touches, right? so he says, because of the hands, they, they made a decree with other limbs as well. Even though when they're touching some other limbs, it doesn't really bring you to, to bad thoughts. But it says, when it comes to testicles, we don't care about it so much. And even if he would touch it with his hands, right? Uh, uh, it wouldn't come to bad, bad thoughts like that, right? Uh, and by the way, I, I think I posted something today about this regarding using the bathroom, you know? that uh, really a, a person shouldn't touch, right, himself when he's in the bathroom, especially when he's not married. But we said, right, if he supports it with his testicles, lifts it up, then it's okay because uh, that's not really an issue. So same thing over here, you know, or same idea. Okay, so then it goes on to say, Katab Rabbeinu Yerucham, says this rabbi, the same thing also applies to tefillah, right, to Amidah. What does that mean? So he says, we need, we require that the limb should not be touching the erva. That's going to be a problem. Okay, very good. So, all right, just a little bit more here. So then he says, um, as we said, right, he's touching the erva of his friend, right? That's also a problem. So he says, you can learn this from Kol Sheken. In other words, all the more so. From the din of two people who were sleeping in one blanket, right? Whatever. With one blanket. So we said, right, already yesterday, we talked about this, that you cannot just turn around one of them and read Kiyat Shema. Uh, if they're using one blanket. And uh, the other one also, the other guy on the other side. Ella, Ella and Ken, unless I tap talit mepsikit benehem, unless there was a talit, right? Which we have today, we use a blanket, right? Nobody sleeps with a talit today. We, the same, blanket is the same thing, right? So he's saying, he's telling you that if there's a blanket or a sheet, whatever, right, that separates them, that's good enough, right? Then we, we uh, they can do it. But as long as they're touching each other, that's going to be a problem, right? We don't want them touching each other. As we said yesterday, right, this only applies below the belt. But above the belt, right, we don't really care that they're touching each other. 
because that, that doesn't really bring you to thoughts, bad thoughts, whatever. Okay, very good. So let's see the Shulchan Ruch on that. Uh, okay. Um, when it comes to other limbs, that they see the erba, mutar, right? If that's happening, it's allowed, as we said. But if one of his limbs is actually touching the erba, then whether it's yours or somebody else's, so you can't do kirat shema and tefillah like that. So he says the thighs that the erva lies on it, right, uh, uh, sits on it. There has to be some kind of inter, uh, right, in, 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 interruption there with a beged, with a cloth, right? So as we said, if you're wearing underwear, you're good. Or you're wearing pants, right? That's good. Uh, okay, good. Um, Either you got to cover it with something or to distance it in a way that they're not touching each other. So one or the other, right? Otherwise, it's going to be a problem there. Okay, very good. So we'll go to Vav. There's one more. It says, right, uh, let's say his, um, Talit uh, was girded on him, on his waist, right? So basically he's wearing it like a belt, you know, kind of like the same thing as we said, right? When he squeezes himself with his arms, right? he wraps his arms around him. So now he's wrapping his Talit around him, same thing, right? Uh, so it says, Memra de Ravuna besof perek mishemeto. It's over there in the brachot uh, chabdal uh, amudet. Metania kivate and this brayta, which agrees with him, right? Haytat talito chagura motnab. So it says like this: <clears throat> If the talit was girded on his uh, th- on his waist, mutar likro kiyat shema. You can read kiyat shema like that. As we said, why? Why is that? Because you know there's a separation between top, between the top of the body and the bottom of the body. But when it comes to tefillah, we're a little bit more strict about that. Actually, chaset libo, he has to cover his heart. So you know what that means? Uh, he has to actually like you know wear a t-shirt or something, right? At least that much. So that's why, right? Uh, when you <laughs> when you're praying amida, you can't. Uh, you know, I have like your a torn T-shirt. You know, like today people, you know, they like to wear they like to wear torn clothing. You ever notice this today? I think that they think it's cool. You know, oh yeah, my jeans are torn. You know, my my shirt is torn. Oh wow, that's great. You know, fantastic. Like, uh, yeah, you're like you're my you're my hero. You're my superhero. <laughs> I mean, some people think it's really cool, but the truth is, right, that uh, if your if your chest is not covered, I'm talking about a man even, right? Uh, all the more so, a woman. Right, uh, you should not uh, you should not say the amida like that. So here's the thing, right? That there's a, you know if you if you ever been to the beach in Israel, <laughs> you may notice one one interesting thing, right? You come over there, these chabad guys, you know chabadskers, and they look for people to put tefillin on them, you know, over there, in the beach. They can put tefillin, you know. Hopefully, the tefillin is kosher, you know. I hope, I hope it is, right? So anyway, right? Uh, what happens is that um, you know, they're wearing like bathing trucks, right? These guys, you know, bathing suits, right? And they're not going to get dressed now, you know, put on their pants, you know what I mean, and their t shirt. So, are they allowed to put feeling with their bathing suit? That's the question, right? So, the answer is yes, they are allowed to. Why is that? Because when it comes to feeling, all you need is that your erva should be covered, you know? Uh, so, when you're wearing bathing suit, it's covered. You know, uh, that's it, right? So you can put feeling like that. So those Chabad guys over there, right, they're okay. They're doing okay though, with that with that business. Uh, but <laughs> but what they can't do, right, is they can put feeling and say kiyat shema. But what they can't do is they can't say the amida. 
unless unless they put on a t-shirt, right? And some shoes also, hopefully, right? Because if you don't put on a t-shirt, your heart is not covered. And when it comes to Amidah, your heart has to be covered, you know? So at the very least, you need a t-shirt, you know? Uh, something like that, right? Okay, very good. So, uh, and that's not, it's not, that's not the same thing as we said yesterday, right? Regarding the heart seeing the erva, the nakedness, right? The, the genitals. It's not the same thing. Even if it doesn't see the erva, because you're wearing a trunks, swimming trunks, but nevertheless, it's, since it's uncovered, it's not allowed to do Amida like that. We already discussed, by the way, if you remember, we talked about the issue of the chazan, right? The chazan is even more strict than, than a regular person, right? If he's a chazan, he also has to cover his arms as well, you know, uh, including his elbows, right? Uh, he can't have like, you know, short sleeves uh, and be the chazan. So what I always do, you know, when I see somebody going up with short sleeves to be the chazan, I yell at him, you know, I tell him, hey, buddy, you know, like, what's with you, you know? You don't have a jacket? No. Okay, so put on a talit. So they tell them to put a talit. They put talit, right? That's what they do, right? So they cover themselves with talit. So then what they do is they they cover themselves, you know, but uh, they fold it up so you can see the arms. So I tell them, what, you, what does that help you? I, I still see your arms. So then he, he, he pulls it down, you know, the talit. So this way the arms are covered. <laughs> so it's, now he can be the chazan. <laughs> right? So that's, that's the only way to do it. So... You know, each thing has its own uh, standard, right? Uh, we have Kriyat Shema, one level. Then we have the, right, uh, the Tfilah, it's a different level. And then we have the Chazan, which is a higher level, a little bit. So each one has its own level, right? Okay, very good. So as we said... Um... I have a question. <laughs> sure. So um, you had once told me that when we do the Amidah, that we're supposed to dress as we would if we were standing before the king. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm the king, by the way. So please, you know, dress properly now. Right? Oh, dress in so, accordance with the king's presence. Okay. No, I'm joking. So, I'm joking. Go ahead. I'm, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so how about for women? Do they need to keep their arms covered when they're doing Amidah? Oh, uh, here, okay. That's a good question. So as we said, right, that when it comes to the issue of the arms, it's only uh, for the Chazan. So I'm, I'm assuming that you're not the Chazan. Unless you're, you're you're praying in one of those places, you know, I don't want to mention, right? Those no, places. Not, <laughs> not the Hazan, but I mean, if they're dressed like the way I would be for the king. I hope you're not going to Temple Emmanuel there in Manhattan, right over there. You're not going over there. I'm okay. not in Manhattan. <laughs> but anyway. No, but if I'm sorry. Were, if so what are you dress, saying? I'm sorry. Yeah. If I were to dress the way I would dress before the king, I would keep my arms and my, and my knees covered. Oh, I like that. That's good. Okay. So you know the truth is, I bet you, okay, I bet you. Prove, prove me wrong, if you will, right? That if you go to the White House, right? And you're wearing short sleeves, you know, they're not going to say nothing to you. Am I right? I, but I wouldn't wear short sleeves. <laughs> right, but they're not going to tell you to leave. Okay. So what that means is that in America, you can go to the president and wear short sleeves. He's not going to throw you out. So therefore, right, it's considered to be acceptable. You know what I mean? Okay. So then why, why is it that, uh, but you know, th there's the issue of being a woman, right? In other words, because of tzniut, they have to wear short sleeves, you know, long sleeves, I'm sorry, right? Because tzniut of a woman. But I'm saying if a Goyesha woman went, right, to, to, to the White House, they're not going to kick her out. She has short sleeves. And in fact, they're going to probably enjoy looking at her, you know what I'm saying? They like it, you know? So what uh, doesn't really matter. <laughs> Whatever, right? So... Uh, so yeah, there, with the, with the woman, there's an issue of tzniut, right? But that's only really when you go outside. So when you're home, right, and your sleeves are not really long, uh, so there it's not going to be a problem because you're not the chazan. So then why the, why now I ask you a question, right? Why can't the chazan have short sleeves? What's the what's the, what's the reason for that? We covered it actually, you know, before. I'm not sure if you were there for that class, but. Uh, but anyway, right? The uh, what it says in the in the halacha is that uh, because the kavod of the tzibur, right, the honor of the community. 
So what does that mean? You know, when somebody with short sleeves goes up there to be the chazan, it, it cheapens the honor of the community, you know? Uh, so therefore, this is the reason why they can't do it, right? But when you're praying at home, obviously, right, that doesn't, doesn't apply. So you could get away with that, you know? I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> Thank you. But if you want to be a good girl, you know, and cover your arms, that's even better, right? Obviously, right? Uh, that you, you will definitely score points with that. You know what I mean? So definitely, definitely you get, you know, that's the proper thing to do, but not really an obligation so much. Okay, so uh, that's the story with that. So now, right, we're going to the Bet Yosef. It says over here, Memra de Rav Huna besof perk mishem meto, right? It's, it's, it's from Rav Huna in Chav Dal Damud Bet, in Brachot over there. Betania, there's a brighter there. Kivate, the brighter teachers like him, we, we just read this. Haita talito hagura motna, we read this already. About the tefillah, right? So we said for tefillah, it's no good, right? Because their heart is not covered. So Pirish Rashi, Rashi explains there, right? Hagura al motnab. What does that mean that it's, you know, girded on uh, her waist? That means that it's covering him from the waist and below. So what does that mean? That the, the chest is not covered, right? The bottom, bottom line. And even though above the waist he's naked, same thing with swimming trunks, right? As we just mentioned. When it comes to tefillah, when it comes to prayer, amida, right, as we just mentioned, right? It has to be like you're in front of the king. So you have to be standing with fear there. When it comes to kiyat shema, it's not that like you're talking in front of the king. Like in the Kabbalah, by the way, you know, it calls this olam uh, silut, uh, right? In other words, when you're going, to do the Amidah, this is the highest level of prayer. Uh, so you're in the highest olam, the highest world, Kabbalistically speaking, right? So the, what does that mean? You're like right in front of Hashem, you know? Smack right in front there, you know, of the of, of the king, of the Melech, Malchem Lachim. So therefore, you know, it's a higher standard there. So the chest has to be covered, right? That's the idea, okay. When it comes to Kiyot Shema, you don't need the chest covered. Okay. Good. So we're finished with the Bet Yosef. Let's go to Shulchan Aruch. And we're done with this chapter. Baruch Hashem. Okay. We're rolling along pretty well here. Thank God. Haitat Talit Tochagura al So it says, right, that if his Talit was girded on his waist, so what does that mean? It's covering him uh, from the waist and below. Even though when it comes to above his waist, he's naked. So basically, right, he's like at the beach, you know, uh, how a guy goes to the beach, you know, uh, like that, right? You can read like that. But you're not allowed to pray Amida like that. Why? He's got to cover his, his chest, right? To, to, to pray the Amidah. It doesn't really say the chest, right? It says the heart. So right? you got to cover the way your heart is, which is the chest, you know, more or less. Okay, very good. That's that. So we'll go now to the next chapter, which is Ayn Hay, 75. <laughs> Just bring up the tour here.
So says the tour like this. Tefach ha-megule be'isha b'makom sh'dalcha l'chasota asur l'kob k'yad sh'mani g'nima. So this, we're, now we're getting into right, important halachot, especially for the ladies, and also the men who are watching ladies, you know, who are seeing the ladies also. So we get from both sides, really, the truth is, right? So there's a rule like this in, 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 the, in the Talmud, right? Uh, where is this brought down? In the Masechet Brachot. Uh, that tefach ha-megule be'isha, that one tefach, right, which is like one fist, eight centimeters, that's what it is, right? Which is which is exposed with a woman in a place where it's a derek to cover it there. You know how to read when, when you see that, right? When you're looking at this. Even if it's his wife. Right? Same thing also applies, he says, to the uh, the leg of the woman. Right, the code connect that to read the. If you see the leg, right, the, the, we're talking about the the upper leg, right, the thigh, whatever you want to call it. Connect that the shark, the seal shadisha, shadarka lechasoto. Also the hair of the woman, right, which is the derech, the way to cover it. Asuri code connect connect do. You're not allowed to read when you if you see that. Aval, but it says however, bet to lodge shadarka the left pair of rosh mutar. But if it's a single girl, right, who's never been married. So there, it's okay because you know they're not obligated to cover their hair. Okay, uh, and then it's, there's one more halacha here. I guess we'll just finish the tour of the whole thing. It's very short. So it says asur likrov keneged erbat goy. It says also if you see a goy right who's not covered, also forbidden right. So you shouldn't think that you know uh, a, a Jew is asur, uh, but a goy is muta. Why would you think that, by the way? I mean, we have the same body, don't we? What, what difference does it make if it's a goy or a Jewish woman? Uh, so, so, are you saying that they also say um, Dashima or Amida? Uh, no, no. What we're saying is that if you see uh, the body of the goy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about Tafka Goya, right? A Jewish, uh, a Goyish woman, right? So okay. if you see her, it's also a problem. You know, you can't read if you see her. Oh, I see. I see what you, you know mean. What I mean. Yes. Uh, so, uh, why would you think that there's a difference between a goy and a Jew? We have the same body, don't we? We have the same anatomy, don't we? Uh, do Jews have some kind of extra? Anatomy that they're going to have. Yeah, we've got an extra. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have an extra neshama. Oh, God bless you, right? But we don't see that, right? Unless right. you're Baba Sali. Maybe Baba yeah. Sali can see that. We, guess. Our, we are held to a higher standard. Okay, wow, that's pretty nice. Okay, so what's the story with that, right? So you know what Gemara says? You may have thought to say that the going are like animals, you know? So it's okay. You know, like they're not people. In other words, we're not we're not allowed to be with them anyway so it's like you know you see like uh you know a deer in the field you know some kind of whatever right it's the same thing so it comes to tell you no what why would you think that like animals right uh, they have the same body as we do why is it, what, uh, they look the same as we do you know so therefore you shouldn't think like that right that's what i'm trying to tell you so therefore it's a sur. uh so then it goes on to say another important one right here but these, by the way, these halachot over here, there's many issues today in our times that are uh, very relevant here. Very, very relevant. Uh, another thing which, uh, which it says here is that erva be'ashashit v'roa ota derecha dofnotea asur ikot kenegda. So he says now, what about if you see the erva, the nakedness, right? But not directly, like through glass, right? Through a prism, whatever, I don't know. Through a window, right? Whatever, God knows, right? Whatever, right? Is that okay or is it also forbidden? So it's forbidden. Why? Because you do see it anyway, right? Uh, the fact that you know there's glass in in the middle doesn't uh, you can you can, doesn't make it any worse. You can still see it pretty well. So there, I'm sorry, Rabbi. What about in today's day and age, a digital photo? 
<laughs> oh boy, I was afraid you were going to get to that. <laughs> I was afraid you were going to get to that. <laughs> okay, so the truth is, you know, the truth, I'll tell you honestly, what I saw in one of the books, you know, the rabbi, my rabbi, he writes that if you see, if you see a woman directly, right? In other words, she's live, right? Right in front of you. You see her nakedness. So that's from the Torah problem. You know what I'm saying? That prohibition. Seeing her nakedness. If you see it uh, through a um, reflection, it's, it's only rabbinical. Right? It's a rabbinical pr prohibition. So what does that mean? Uh, in the Gemara, it talks about this, right? Reflections. You know, you know where? It talks about you're looking in the water, right? Let's say into a lake. And you see the reflection of this woman in the water, right? So that's a prohibition from the rabbis because you're not looking at her directly. You understand? Yeah. So, so this For sure, right? You see from there, that seeing it on a screen, right, is not from the Torah. The worst we can say is it's from the rabbis, you know what I mean? Because it's like a reflection, you know what I mean? You understand? Yeah. Kabot uh, Haraf, I have a question. Yeah. But the thoughts are going to be equally as bad, no? Either reflection or live, no? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> you guys are getting me into trouble now. Don't get me into trouble. I'm such a, I'm just a little guy now. I'm just a little little kid over here. Okay, so yeah, no, I'm joking. But uh, uh, the truth is, what you are saying is very, 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 very right and very correct. So what I mean to tell you is like this, right? That even though that seeing a screen is not really from the Torah for sure, right? No question about it. But the problem is that it brings you to bad thoughts, you know. And this is the this is where you get into trouble. In other words, the essence of seeing it is one thing, you know, but the fact that it's gonna it's gonna pollute your mind, you know, that's that's where you get into trouble. You have bad thoughts, you know, whatever. So therefore, right, a person has to be very careful about what he sees on a screen, you know, um, especially a guy, right? Uh, because the men are more. You know, we're more commended on this than the women are. But anyway, right, the point is that uh, that's the way it works, you know, with uh, there's some, there are things which were, are from the Torah, there are things that are, which are from the rabbis. Uh, okay, whatever, right? That's the, that's the story, pretty much. So now the question is like this, right? Uh, can you read, can you read Kiyat uh, Shema when you're looking at a naked woman uh, with, on an iPhone? The answer is no, because it's going to bring you to bad thoughts, right? So therefore, you shouldn't do that, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what we're talking about here. So uh, that's the story, right? That's why I told you, right? This is very relevant today, these halachot. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues that come out of this, by the way. We're going to talk about it, Reza Hashem. Let's see how much time we have. Okay, we got another like 10, 15 minutes, so we can go on a little bit. Let's see the bit yourself and we'll see, right, how this how this uh, comes, right, opens up this whole thing. How this develops. So, um, first we got to see bit yourself, I'm sorry. I got to bring up the bit yourself. So, yeah, it says in the Bet Yosef, what's the source for this? Besopek Misha Metor, right? Also in Brachot, right? As we said, Chav Dal Lamud Aleph, Amar Avitzchak Tefach Beisha Erba. It says over there, one Tefach, right? Which is a fist, right? Eight centimeters. In the Isha, and a woman is Erba. It's nakedness, right? So that means you cannot read Kriyat Shema. Uh, when, when you see this. 
So Gemara asks a question, right, about this. Lemai, regarding what is this halacha said, right? Regarding what? If you're talking about, if you're allowed to look at her, so he says that, you know, we don't even need tefach, right, for that. Even less, right? Even the little pinky of a woman, if you're looking at her pinky for to get enjoyment out of it, right, uh, it's uh, right, it's like you're looking at her private parts. So it says, now we're talking about his wife over here, right? Uh when it comes to Kiyat Shema, Amar al Chazda, right? Uh, so what, what what does that mean? That if you are at home, right, and you're married, if you see your wife naked, one tefach, right? So you can't read Kiyat Shema. So what do you got to do? Uh, turn around, you know, or go into a different room, or or close your eyes, right? That's another option. There's a whole discussion about that in the Poskin, by the way. Are you allowed to close your eyes or? You have to actually turn around. But we pass him that, you know, any of these things will help you, right? Uh, so if you are at home with your wife, right, and you're looking at these things, uh, you gotta, you know, make sure you don't see it when you do the Kiyat Shema. That's what we're saying. Amrab Chazda, Shuk Bisha Berba. So then it goes on to say, right, but also shok, right, which is the thigh of the woman, is also erva, nakedness. Amar Shemuel, kol beisha erva, also the voice of the woman, right? So that's why you got to be careful about listening to women singing, right? Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, because that's also, um, it also is, uh, brings bad thoughts. Amar av sheshat, shar beisha erva, also the hair, right? As we mentioned in the tour. Right? So all these things are considered to be erva, nakedness of the right, the pr- promiscuous, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, so now he brings the Rashi, right? Perish Rashi. Rashi explains shok, right? What is a shok? Right? Uh, we're talking about the thigh of the woman. So Rashi says, Beshet ish, we're talking about a married woman. So what does that mean? If you see your wife, right, her 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 thigh, you can't read the kiachima like that. Right, erva listakel. So what does that mean? Listakel to look at her, or right when it comes to his wife with kiachima. The haba timihali my kamashmanan Rav Chazda. So he says, I'm wondering what is Rav Chazda coming to teach us here? Kol makom shederech lechasoto haya erva. That every place, right? In other words, every place we already mentioned that every place where it's a way to cover it is called nakedness, called erva. So then why Dafka does it say the, the thigh, right? We already, every place, it should be like that. So why are you telling me Dafka the thigh? It's just like, it's like anything else. Well, my area shook. So then why did it tell you Dafka the thigh? So it's, I found the Rashba, right? Shkatav, he writes, right? that which we said that Tefach uh, that Isha is Erva, with the woman's Eva, Yokimra Beishto, we're talking about his wife, Kiachima. Pirasha Rava, as Raj Rava explains, Devsha Dafka Mimakom Sanua Sheba. So he says that's talking about maybe it's a place which is hidden, you know, where the Allah Ka'ate Rabhazda. And regarding that, Rabhazda comes and says, the Mimar the Shok Beisha Makom Sanua Verba. So it comes and tells you, right, what's an example of a place where a woman covers herself? The thigh is an example of that. That's one way to explain the Gemara. Right, according to the Ravad. Good. Uh, who? Even when it's her husband, right? His husband. Her husband, I'm sorry. Even though it's not uh, that it's not really, when it comes to a man, right? The thigh is not really something uh, right uh, uh, problematic. Uh, seeing a man's thigh, right? There's nothing there. So, when it comes to her face and her hands and her feet, the call dibura and her and her voice, sheno uh, zemer, which is not singing, the seara and her hair, mikutz letzemata, outside of her um, her um, forehead, sheno mitkasa, it is not covered. And we're not concerned about that. 
because those things, you know, we're used to it. The husband is used to it. So, you know, what do we care about that, right? It doesn't bring him to any thoughts. He sees it all the time like that. But not tarit, so therefore it doesn't bother him. So it says, it seems like the, the tour, uh, he went like this opinion. That he wrote that the tefach, which is open, right, with a woman, it's exposed. Right, we're talking about a place where the, the ways to cover that part of the body. So implies that we're regarding a place where it's not the way to cover it. Like her face, on her hands, we don't care about that. That's, you know, that's like normal life, right? We don't, uh, nobody, nobody gets aroused by that. And then afterwards he says, also, if her thigh is exposed, asur, it's forbidden. Komar means to tell you, that even when it comes to woman, uh, so when it comes to a man, there's no problem with the thigh, right? What kind of problem is that? Have erva, beish have erva, beisha. When it comes to woman, it's erva, even though it's not with the man. Be'arosh katav gamken, had a tefach beisha, and the rosh says right that uh, regarding a woman, what we said right, tefach by her is a problem. Erva dafka bedavar shagil yot mekuse. That's only a place where it's generally covered, beisha right with woman. Katav od. He writes further, So, right, so it tells you, right, we're talking about an, another woman. But when it comes to herself, right, the woman herself, so then we already learned, right, uh, that a woman can sit, she can sit uh, naked, right, on the floor, as we mentioned uh, like half hour ago, right? And uh, make make blessings, uh, right? Because as we said, right, when she's sitting on the floor, her erva is covered because of the nature of the woman's right uh, place. It's no lower; the, the genitals are lower. So then we said, right, that the thigh with the woman is erva. That's only for others, right? Not for herself. You know, she doesn't get aroused by herself. You know what I mean? It's not uh, not exactly normal. Mishom Mihirhu, right? There's no problem. Aval Yatsma, Lord, for herself, it's not a problem. Because the Gemara says, right, just not like that, that she's allowed to sit there naked and make blessings. Okay, good. So the Katava Rosh says the Rosh, uh, Od, furthermore, he writes, That which we said that the woman's voice is Erva, Perush Lishmoa. Right? That means to hear it. It's not talking about Kiyat Shema. So therefore, Rabbeinu the tour left that out because he doesn't consider this to be in this category. About the Mordechi, but the Mordechi Katab, he writes something else. In the name of Rabbeinu Hai, one of the Geonim, right? All these things are talking about Kiyat Shema. That's what it says also Mohel. When Mohel, the Kol Zemer, Apilu, Oh. So look what he says, right? That even with his wife who's singing, you know, he shouldn't read Kiyat Shema when she's singing. Um, and that's what it says, and also there, but it says the Mordechi writes, um, therefore it's forbidden to say, you're not allowed to say something kedusha, something holy, when you're hearing the voice of the woman, right? Uh, when she's singing, right? Uh, well, when Otain always says, but he says, uh, you know, unfortunately, he says, Ben Hagoim Anu Yoshvim Bet Look what he says, right? So he says today it's like actually we have no choice sometimes. You know what I mean? Sometimes you hear some goyish woman singing, so he says we have no choice. Sometimes we have to say Kiyat Shema, even you hear some goyish woman singing, you know, at the same time. We got no choice, you know, because we're living a galut. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I already, by the way, talked about this in my, one of my classes regarding, you know, if it's recorded, the, the woman's voice, right? It's not really a problem, halakhically. 
It's only when it's live, right? She's like there in the room with you, you know? But if it's recorded, it's okay. Because she's not there, you know? So whatever. Okay, it's a whole discussion about that. I don't want to get into that now. But anyway, right? Um, Says, ah, look what he says, right? So therefore he says, we're not careful to stop learning if we hear some Goyesh woman, you know, singing, you know, uh, whatever. I guess in those days, this was something common, you know? Because uh, you know what it was, in the churches they used to do this, right? They used to sing, the, the ladies there in the church, whatever, God knows, or some other place, right? The opera, whatever it was, right? So because of that, they used to hear them and they were learning Torah, you know, so they continued to learning. They didn't stop learning because they heard some woman singing, you know. They, they, they weren't that crazy about it. Right? That's, by, that's by the way, the reason why you can't go to an opera, you know, because uh, you're hearing women singing over there. So you're not allowed to go to an opera. I remember one time there was some modern Orthodox rabbi, right, who was telling his, uh, was telling his keila. I was sitting there, you know, it's like 35 years ago, whatever. He says, yeah, we went to the opera last night, you know. I was like, you went to the opera, you're a rabbi, you know. I was like, I was like, my God, you know, rabbis go to operas? So since when does this happen? <laughs> but this is modern orthodox, you know what I mean? They, they, don't, they don't keep the halakha, when it, especially when it comes to tzniyut, you know, uh, between men and women, you know, these kinds of things. They're totally uh, off when it comes to that. So be careful, right? Don't go to, that's why I warn you, don't go to synagogues, you know, which are modern orthodox. Don't pray there. Don't participate with them. Don't do nothing with them. Better to pray at home, by the way. You know, take a, pick a nice corner in your room somewhere, in your bedroom, and pray over there. Better to pray over there than to pray with the modern Orthodox. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so let's see the Shulchan Ruch and we'll, we'll be done. Don't have too much time. Hey, Rabbi, did we, did we finish the bed yourself? Uh, did we? I don't know. <laughs> did I skip something? Uh, let me look at that again. Yeah, I don't think we finished. Do you have the book with you, by the way? No, the book okay. goes till okay, Memhe. Okay, anyway, let me just read right now. Rabbi Yonah Katab Gamkin, the Kol Bishai Rabbah. Right, yeah, you're right. There's something else here. So he says, Rabbi Yonah also says, right, that the woman's voice is Erba, Kiachima for Kiachima, who, Vehane Mile Beshat, Mishemenagnet. He says, that's only when she's actually singing, you know? Like, uh, if he's just speaking, you know, it says mutar, it's allowed. So he says, right, speaking is okay, just when she's singing, that's the problem. So even if she's singing, right, as long as he can concentrate, when, he, when he's praying, that like he can like phase it out, out of his head, you know, block it out. As if like he doesn't hear it. But you know, um, he doesn't pay attention to it. Mutar, there you go. It's, it's interesting, right? So for Kurt, if a person can block it out of his mind, you know, it's allowed, he says. Interesting idea. Like ignore it, you know? Uh, he doesn't have to stop bringing. So it's also... Uh, same thing with a woman who has an open tefach, right? One, eight centimeters, something open in her body, exposed. It's only forbidden when she's actually looking at that, you know? But if you look away or whatever, or close your eyes, as we said, right? So what is he saying over there, right? There's a difference between staring at it and just like seeing it, like, you know, by the way. That's okay, you know? In other words, in other words you're not really intending to look at it. It's just that it's in your, it's in your field of vision. It's there, but you're not in, intending to look at it, you know, to, 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 to observe it. That's okay, he says. So these are very important concepts in halakha, by the way, you know. A person has to know, because sometimes we need these concepts to, uh, to allow certain things in halakha. Okay, I guess we'll stop there. We got still more to do. So we'll do it next time, as a Hashem. Okay, thanks for being with us tonight. Be blessed with wealth, health, happiness. Chazak Baruch. See you tomorrow. Be holy and happy and uh, come back and see us again. All the best. Thank you, Rabbi. Chazak Baruch.